Hey, what's going on? The cost of living. It's been going up, rising steadily for no reason at all. And of course, I want to talk about Michi X and a movie I just saw a year late, over a year late. Turned out to be pretty good to me. Should have watched it sooner, but I just wasn't interested in the subject matter at the time. And of course, the director was a turnoff. But the cost of living. That's why I always said, and people, you know, like Tariq Nasheed been stealing my style, of course. If they give us reparations, they can just increase the cost of living, which will devalue or undervalue what they gave. Or they can grossly undervalue the dollar, no matter what, and and keep everything lower. Because it's a class thing too, race, racism and class. And I don't know about you, I, I've been noticing this since what? The 2000s, like you buy ice cream, you know, they used to come in half gallons. And then they came in, what, 1.5 quarts or some shit like that? But still shaped like it's a half gallon. And I think, I forgot there was one brand, could have been Briars. There's one brand, I, I don't think any of them make a half gallon yet. Briars, not even Friendlies, I don't think they do that. One brand that used to always keep it at a half gallon. And then they finally capitulated and shrank, shrank it down. Even that Tillamook ice cream, which I believe it was a half gallon when it first, well, when I first heard about it. Then they shrank it down too. Kept the prices high. It is rich and smooth, very good ice cream. I'm still trying to find that banana split one. Can't find that for nothing. But it's very good ice cream. It's worth it when it's on sale. It's like haagen But that's how ice cream products have gotten slick. By just shrinking down the product. Um, cans. I don't know if you noticed, but you grab a can... <laughs> A tuna fish or practically anything but especially tuna fish why don't you hold it between your fingers and squeeze it there was a time when you couldn't squeeze it <laughs> because the the the, the uh, I guess whatever the hell is made out of, I don't know if it's still made out of tin but it was so thick that you you know com combined with the stuff that's inside that you really couldn't squeeze it with two fingers and get feedback on it now you can and when you open it, it's so thin. It's like they put it just enough to secure the product. And I bought Scott Tissue. Been using it all my life, like a lot of people have. Some people have their preferences. I come to find that a lot of the products that my mother used and thought were the best, I, you know, I, I carried that on. I, I, I ended up seeing why she used certain products. Kleenex tissues, Scott toilet paper. Of course, you get something different depending on what's going on. You know, as far as whether or not they have it or whether you don't feel like paying that price for it. Uh, she preferred Carolina rice. When I was a child, I preferred Uncle Ben's, but I liked the Carolina. And of course, East Indians, Hispanics, they don't, they're not down with Carolina rice. They don't know nothing about that. But the shit is good. Carolina rice is the overall best rice. That Bismati shit, you know, that ain't bad. But overall, Carolina rice, that smell, the taste. That's why I don't know how it's doing across the rest of the world, but in this country, it's doing its thing. So you got that. Scott toilet tissue. Or tissue paper, whatever you want to call it. I bought... 
I told you about the 36 pack I bought that time during the so-called pan. Well, you know, I don't even want to say it's during the C19 uh, era. And it seemed like the normal Scott tissue that you normally get. Then I bought one that lasted a while. Then I got one before the latest two batches I got. And I noticed that they weren't, uh, yeah, I forgot the technical term. I think it's, uh, calendared, I think. I think that's the flattened. You know, cut. It wasn't cut. It wasn't pre-cut. But it seemed normal. Now, these new ones I got, I noticed to the touch, I noticed the rolls have been, uh, getting used up a lot quicker. But it's still supposed to be a thousand sheets or more. But yet, I could feel, they feel wetter. Even though they're dry, but they feel wetter, which means that they're thinner. They thinned out the Scott tissue paper. I noticed that. Because a roll could last a while. Scott tissue, that's why my mother used to buy that. As opposed to any other brand, because any other brand of toilet tissue, especially those uh, thick ones, Charmin and all that kind of stuff, that should have been gone with, with no question, no time. So... That's their way of cutting costs. Sodas have gone up. Milk technically has gone up, but it hasn't. I don't really drink milk that much. Probably get in the mood to drink something or use something with milk. Maybe once, might buy three gallons a year, something like that, at best. Um. Cereal costs have risen. Uh, of course, rents, electric bills, everything. And you got BS excuses as to why, because there should be no excuse as to why product costs, costs are going up, except that this is all pre-planned. I think it's probably to starve you out for the next go around when they want you to take those shots. Take the shot, your problems will go away. Don't take the shot, you'll have more problems. And don't think that they have abandoned that C-19. I mean, if you've been following the news, and I ain't talking about the actual network news, I'm talking about on your cell phone. Those uh, Any news reports, you know, they still kept mentioning it. Whether it's uh, Fauci, shots, variants, all that kind of shit. They'll make a comeback that just wanted you to enjoy your summer. And the roads have been excessively busy. I don't know if it's because it's the final week I think before Labor Day you know I am wearing my white pants I did wear my white pants this, this summer because I'm like hell I didn't wear it last time so I got in about what three three wears out of it <laughs> and to my surprise I didn't get not one speck of dirt on it so you got to understand this is something that's pre-planned. Everything is pre-planned. Nothing is by chance. But they try to pre-plan it as much as they can. But at the end of the day, if it's meant for them to go down and for their civilization to go down, it will happen. I always say that Rome, the superpower of its day, still with the strong influence and legacy today. Because people still speak speak languages based on that Latin. They thought they couldn't be beaten. Then something happened. That they couldn't control and it was all over for them. Islamic empires. Same thing. Mongols. Same thing. Whoever you can think about. That's why when they get empires they try to secure it. 
because they know it can go. Because before they had it, they had to get it. So the cost of living is going up. Uh, me, I just bought me some car brakes. And I got to change this oil. Figured I'd try some hybrid uh, brakes. I don't think I really need to change the brakes like right now, but. You know, you got, I like to change them before the winter uh, is upon us. Because nobody really likes doing that shit in the cold. It's a pain in the ass. You only want to do that shit in the cold unless you absolutely have to. And um, rotors, I, I don't really like changing rotors until I had about two brake pads on them. And I finally bought something, a tool that I didn't realize existed because when I was first changing the rotors out, they said you needed an impact wrench. But they only showed a manual one where you had to bang it with a hammer and shit. I didn't realize that they had the cordless uh, electric ones, which I finally got. But these people put on the lug nuts so damn tight, it's fucking crazy. So that's why I got that. So this time when I take the rotors off, I won't run into issues where I have to drill the goddamn uh, screw off. Now I can just use this impact drill. And take this shit off. Hopefully. <laughs> Drilling is a pain in the ass. But I think even if I have to drill it out this time, I got this impact driver. So it would be more powerful to drill. I'll probably drill it out in no time instead of just using a regular uh, electric drill. Drill. So the cost of living it has risen. I took a survey from Philo TV and I bring this up because of the cost of living because you know YouTube is always trying to get you to get the cable service that they offer all these different cable services cost a lot Philo TV is the cheapest but and they include TV one but they don't include ESPN so that's why when I took the survey I made sure that I put in I need my sports and TV one at the price that you sell it at and that's the problem that's why I would switch from what's that other one you know the other one the famous one uh, forgot the name of it <laughs> I would keep switching because they got the ESPN they got the sports they got the TNT by Philo they have the TV one you know I love the Fatal Attraction show so it's always a toss up and they both got A&E for the first 48 so it is what it is. <clears throat> but with that being said, you know, the cost of living is going up. It's crazy. I, I've cut back like on BJ's because now you got to have the coupon just to get it closer to the original price that it used to be. The coupon is no longer saving you any money. It's just getting you back to what the price used to be. So that's why I don't even really mess with BJ's like that anymore. But Sam's Club, they didn't really raise prices too much. That takes anything out. But of course, Sam's Club, they closed down a few. So you got to go here, there, and everywhere to get to one. And the gas, the gas prices went down a little bit. The other day, I think I saw a $4.89 for premium which is pretty very good but this congestion on the road is outrageous I was just about to go into a store parking lot was crazy and of course tons of Mexicans everywhere buying tons of water maybe people getting the word I don't know that I'm not getting they were buying tons of water I said to hell with this. I'm going I'm to order my shit online. Because <laughs> I, I I just had to get a couple of things. Uh, so it wasn't even worth my time going in there through the whole crowd. And then waiting in the checkout line just for a few items. So cost of living is going up. We got to beware. And products are getting uh, 
these manufacturers, this is deception if you ask me. Now, of course, they don't, like when it comes to the ice cream, they don't really have to say, look, new smaller size, because when it's a bigger size, they always say, look, new bigger size or new and improved. New flavor, new recipe. No sugar or some shit like that. Something to make you say, okay, I, I should get it. I feel better about this. But when they shrink the, the product down, they didn't say, oh, smaller size. That's how they get slick. But they keep the prices the same. That's theft. That's deception. Where are the class action lawsuits on that? I know they had class action lawsuits on uh, these ice cream makers calling their uh, products ice cream when, when it wasn't really ice cream. So that's why you'll see frozen dairy dessert on a lot of them. And usually it's the kind with the outrageous flavors and colors. So if you're going to eat ice cream, you know, try to stay away from the Snickers. Sometimes you can get away with the Snickers depending on who makes it. But any of that wild, wild stuff. Because it's usually artificial flavors because, you know, they got to get the colors in. And uh, too many sauces is going to be fake shit. And usually when you see those wild flavors, it's going to be frozen dairy dessert. Even with those Klondike bars, frozen dairy dessert. So if you want actual ice cream on bars, you got to get you some uh, Haagen-Dazs or that uh, Magnum. Sometimes friendlies. So you got to look at products. I learned that as a teenager. Look at products and the packaging. So anyway, let me get to this Michi X because a lot of people still been making making comments on the video that I made. They say show the receipts, and they clown me on my views. Oh, you got twenty eight hundred views off this video. Her video got sixteen thousand. Well, of course she's going to get more than me. She's been passed around like a $2 hole to everybody in the so-called black community to try to make it legit. Now, to you people, I say, what do you have to say about her wearing those LGBTQ earrings? Was she declaring that she's Irish? Was she celebrating Skittles? Does she like fruit punch? Did it go with her clothes? You know what the fuck that's all about. And if you're blind to it, I can't help you out on it. But I'm sure a lot of the critics, they're uh, what I call coon support agents. You know, the go ahead, Michi. And that, that same goes for anybody that's a coon agent out there. Go ahead, Farrakhan. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, preach Islam, preach Islam or whatever the hell they talking about. Gotta have that to make the shit appear legit. So they say I need receipts. What do you mean you need receipts? Her, the receipts come out of her mouth. The receipts come out of her goddamn uh, uh, scam business. And she even said that she does not really have any businesses. But then she says she can teach you. Then she says Vicki Dillard can't teach you how to uh, get paid when she's broke. They're doing the same hustle. They came from Dr. Boyce. He's their master and he scammed, but he kept it going. I mean, you can tell when they're under control when they got to talk about certain topics. It's just like that, uh, that fucking TikTok therapist. So you notice I stay away from shit like that because number one, I'm like, okay, who was the girl? I don't know who she is. Two, who gives a fuck about what her views are? Three, she can't be a fucking licensed therapist looking like that because her main thing seems to have been showing her floppy titties. And shaking her ass for some odd reason. So why would her word be concerned? I don't know what her views were like. But like I said, they always manufacture views to say, pay attention to this person. <clears throat> A lot of people are watching. But see, they can manufacture 
shit to make it appear as if a lot of people are watching, but they're not. And then the coon agents always got to talk about it. For what? For what? There's no need to talk about it. It's not of interest to me. Who cares what she said? Who cares about her opinions? This is what they do. And when the call up is there, you'll have some who act like they don't support the LGBTQ. And I'm saying it slowly, slowly to make sure I got it right. <laughs> uh, like Tariq Nasheed. See, that's how you can tell when they're agents, when they must support and promote an agenda. That Marcel Dixon, Dickens Sons, he supported him and still supports that guy and doesn't criticize the guy for being bent. He keeps having this T.S. Giselle tranny call his show. Why do you have, why are you cool with a tranny? Why do you know a tranny? I don't know any trannies. I've seen some in public, <laughs> but I don't know any trannies and I'm not cool with any trannies and I'm not having conversations with trannies. And some people might say, oh, you're homophobic. I'll tell you this uh, versus a regular gay person. <laughs> a tranny is indeed freaky and scary. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think that I wouldn't doubt if they even scared some non tranny gays. Because <laughs> I know some gays got to be like, God damn, that motherfucker is sick of, sicker than a motherfucker. <laughs> you can't tell me some gays can't be thinking that shit. And again, it doesn't make sense to be gay but want to be a woman or try to think you're a woman but you're still attracted to men. Why don't you just stay a man and be gay? Deception, but it's, it's mental illness. I, I don't even want to get into that, but the point is they got to go in that direction and support that shit. So he's supporting it without saying this is Tariq Nasheed. He's supporting the gay situation without saying it. Because they got to keep his rep intact. Farrakhan did the same thing. But he said it. So Tariq Nasheed, he has this trainee call up and some other trainees call up all the time. I don't know why a trainee would be interested in him besides the obvious, but. He supports them. He supports the gay world. He got his homie, Marcel, failed politician. And all people have to do is listen to his rants online to know that he'll never get voted into any office. So Tariq Nashi was supporting uh, one of the, the, the gays and supporting... I guess pan-Africanism because Marcel got a Nigerian so-called boyfriend, booty partner, you know. So it is what it is on that, man. When it comes to Michi X, see, she, when she shows up with the rainbow flag earrings, see, this is, the, this is why I dig deep into... The psychology. See, somebody like her, if I were to address that to her live, she would have said, I like the design or something like that. Why this got to mean some gay shit? I'm like, man, what the fuck else do you think is, it is? You know, she might, you know how it is. They always come up with a plethora of lies and shit. But I look at it like this. You, you ask her a simple question. Did you, did you buy the shit? And if she says yes... That means she went to the store or online, saw it, knew she obviously knows what the shit means, paid for it, and decided to wear them on the air so that you can see. See, and the more 
so-called blacks who at least are paid to support this shit. You know, to, there are a lot of dimwits out there. They'll say, oh, well, I mean, these people seem to be cool with it, so. And after a while, some people might say, the people who are already uh, predisposed to homosexuality might say, well, you know what, maybe I'll give it a shot. Or maybe I can be who I am. <laughs> but you still got to watch out. They might be setting you all up. But she's down with that agenda. Tariq, now she's down with that agenda. They're both coon agents. She's Polish. You got people still arguing with me about her makeup being Polish. Well, her father could have still been abusive and she still had her name. She can change her name. She's proud. She knows that Polish name has benefits in some circles. If she changed her name to Jackson, that's going to be a different situation. See, if you want to be black, meet you, change your name to Jackson. Then nobody will, well, people will still see that you're mixed, but people won't think that you're Polish. But you don't want to change that name. That means your father wasn't abusive. You're lying. And I'm, call, I'm calling you out on it. Show us a police report. Show us that he did time. Miss X. You're lying. You and Zaza Ali are pitiful. And I'm going to tell you why. is because you lie on your white parent. Because you want to hustle black people. You're both coon agents. You're both ex-cons. I told you prisons where they do it at. They turn them out, make them an offer to help them out, like Tariq Nasheed. They make them these, these offers, just like other people. People who want to strike back. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Same routine, and it doesn't stop. I don't want to say on here what we need to do with Coon agents, but you know what we need to do to them. This is a perfect segue into a movie I was just watching the other night. I had it, downloaded it from, you know, one of my spots. Want to hear it in surround sound, but I watched it on the computer instead. That was the U.S. United States against Billy Holiday. Finally, finally got around to watching that. <clears throat> Something told me, watch it. At first, I was disinterested in it when it first came out because Lee Daniels, number one. Two, we already saw Lady Sings the Blues. But then I realized this was about, you know, like the title, this was about the government and their vendetta against her, specifically. And less about her entire life. So I was reading up on it. I didn't read deeply, but I read up on a few things like uh, Lee Daniels said he had to ask Barry Gordy if he can make it for his blessings to make the movie. I'm like, what do you need his blessings for? He ain't Billie Holiday. Shit, he's the one who made a movie on her life. You don't need his blessings if that ever happened. You know, a lot of times you like to say that shit to try to connect the two to gain fans of the old so you won't think it's just a fucking remake. Which apparently turned, turns out it wasn't really a remake. It was a different perspective on her life. Concentrating on the drug use and debauchery. And of course, with Lee Daniels, the girl played a, uh, I, don't know, I don't know her name, but she did a pretty good job with the voice. And they did a good job of paying attention to detail, giving her jaundiced eyes when her liver went out and messed up her teeth because you look at some of the last videos of Billie Holiday and pictures, you know, she had the black gums and fucked up teeth. Drug addict. And so unfortunately, she had to go out, go out that way. But that's, you know, that's something she took upon herself to do. And it is fucked up how they did go after her in that way. And of course, the movie tried to blame it on Hoover and not the government. So. I find that weird and I was shocked that they had the coon agent in there 
And then he shot up heroin. I said, nah, this guy got to be a fake character, but he was real. I said, God damn, what the hell? A guy, black guy grows up privileged, becomes an FBI agent and a coon agent on, on top of that. Then falls in love with Billy Holiday enough to want to start shooting up drugs. I'll be goddamn if I do that. Now, yeah, back then in particular, now today, hell no, a heroin addict celebrity, I am not sticking nothing in her. But back then, I guess you could do that because there was no threat of AIDS and nothing else, hepatitis and all that kind of, well, it probably was hepatitis, but. So he did his thing. Another thing, uh, that struck me there was some game I'm putting on my Instagram so I was taking pictures of uh, scenes that I know Lee Daniel put in there for a reason there was a scene where they talked about the FBI was interviewing the white lady saying uh, are you involved with Billie Holiday I thought they were going get, to get graphic with the uh, lesbianism but it was only implied and one scene kind of, you know, she had, she had kissed the lady, but not an intimate kiss. I'm sure most of you already saw it well before me anyway. But for those who haven't, of course, they had her whoring around, which I'm sure she did, being a heroin addict. Uh, the sex scenes were very graphic. I, I damn sure wasn't expecting that. Or those. The main actress, god damn, she had to take it all off. God damn. She better uh, get a whole lot of roles. Shit, because... God damn. She was basically doing porn. See, that's the thing. You got pervert directors like Lee Daniels out here uh, trying to humiliate women. And there was a shower scene when she went to jail the first time. Very brief. Had all those women naked getting uh, sprayed with water. I'm like, that wasn't even necessary to put that scene in there. But he did, and put the, the fat lady in there too. It's like a humiliation thing, if you ask me. Just like Spike Lee, he'll do the uh, nude scenes. To me, it's almost like, okay, he has a nice looking woman in there and he got the power. You do this for this role or you don't get it. So it's like he's like, damn, I can see these women naked do what I want to do in Lee Daniels case it's probably humiliation because the new shit you didn't really you don't really need the sex scenes in, in movies the truth be told uh, so he had a scene where she was getting pounded from the back in a uh, dressing room and you can see the males behind I'm like damn man yeah I forgot uh, I said damn I haven't seen a movie sexually that sexually graphic in a while or at least not in the 2000s that I can recall 2000s, 2020s that I can recall so 20 teens forgot about that decade too 2000s, the teens and now we're in the 20s so you see the man's behind and I bring that up <laughs> because Lee Daniels is a homosexual director that's why and I'm, I'm thinking about if I were doing that role as an actor, I, I say the the fun part would be, you know, at least pretending to bang the uh, the actress and grind on her. But then you got a pervert like Lee Daniels looking at your ass, which is probably why he had these guys do these scenes. Then the uh, coon agent, FBI guy, that graphic hotel scene. I mean, damn. I haven't seen shit like that since what? Shaft and uh, Shaft's Big Score and Superfly. Those, those graphic type of sex scenes. I'm like, damn. She goes and just spreads her ass and I know if they gave her a thong to cover that stuff. If they did. I don't know if they did. If they didn't, then God damn it, that guy, that actor, I've, I've seen that guy someplace before. His face looks familiar. Uh, My man got a treat, <laughs> I, I guess. I said, God damn, acting is something else, man. You go in there, rehearse lines and shit. You want that paycheck, you want the credit. 
Then on the side, you get you some pussy. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Sucking on some titties and shit. I said, God damn. I mean, damn. I mean, he could have done without all that shit. All you got to do is hug, maybe kiss, cut, or fade. Not even necessary. That's what, even as a little kid, I used to see graphic sex scenes in movies. I'm, I always, always used to say, why are they doing this? And why would the actor do this? And how could an actor be married and do all this kind of shit? Because, you know, once, once the two people are fucking all naked and shit, unless they did some computer manipulation, I mean, they're basically touching. So there ain't nothing you can uh, get away from with that kind of shit. So she got a man. I'm, I, if I were her man, I'd be like, God damn. So I know you got your career <laughs> that you want to pursue. But fuck, man. I can't take much more of this shit. Shit. Tongue and strangers down. Spreading your ass. Oh, shit. Then, of course, he, you know, had the gay uh, shit. There was a scene where the, I guess it's the guy that was supposed to have been, I forgot who Billy D was. I don't know if he, he was playing McKay. I don't think he was, was he? I think he was, but the beatings and all that manipulation, I don't think he did all that. But it may have been the guy that was hitting her from the back in the uh, dressing room. Maybe that's who Billy D. Williams was playing. He hit her too. Uh, when he hit her in the dressing room, and she went on the floor, I don't know if you noticed that fat girl tried to stop her from going out the door. And I'm sure Lee Daniels had to plan this shit this way. So Billy Holiday's ass was in the air. And the fat girl's face was right in her ass. <laughs> looking right into it. You can't tell me that shit was by accident. Then they kind of froze the uh, scene for the most part. Then there was another scene where she was getting her dress and looked like some lesbianism was going on. But it wasn't. But it's implied shit. Then of course the lunatic at the beginning of the movie that was interviewing her. Weirdo, uh, weirdo to the fullest. First thing I had to see was like, who the fuck is that? And who the fuck would have been looking like that back in what? 19 and 1950s. <laughs> so I looked that character up as far as I could tell. I didn't really look hard, but as far as I could tell, that was a uh, fictitious character. Because, you know, Lee Daniels is a homosexual. They only use him to try to put that shit onto the black world. Now, his directing skills ain't bad, you know. You know, I, I ain't gonna... Uh, Say that the man doesn't know what he's doing. You know, my man put together, you know, from a uh, technical standpoint, my man put together a quality production. You know, and I like the CGI when she went to uh, Times Square from back in, back in the uh, 50s. Because I was looking up pictures of uh, Times Square and other shit in the 50s. In color, because uh, that's a, a decade I'm now stuck on researching. And it did, you know, the 50s, you know. I looked at them as archaic, but I'm looking at that shit. I guess if you were back then, back there, I mean, and you see shit in color, you probably would have been shocked and amazed too. By what you were seeing, even though it looks pretty old now, but. but that's one scene. Then there was another scene, you know, he had the black guy. I, I seen that black dude somewhere too. I think. Don't tell me that was Cool Bubba Ice. I think that could have been him. That played the guy, the gay guy with the wigs. Yeah, that's probably where I noticed him. Now, I ran, that's a comedian I ran into. If that's him, I'm going to look it up. I ran into him quite a few times. Quite a few times. To the point that he'll know my face if he ever saw me again. I, <laughs> but I, I didn't see if that character was real. Uh... But obviously, 
the gay shit had to be introduced because Lee Daniels that's why they promote the guy let me see him do something without black people and without the gay shit maybe I'll look up his credits when I get home and, and see what he did do but all I know is everything he's doing they're trying to make him the new Spike Lee or since John Singleton is dead He's trying to take his spot and maybe Spike Lee's spot for all we know. Uh, but with the homosexual shit introduced into the shit. It's brainwashing. It's what I call slow burn brainwashing. But again, I stick to this because of my own personal studies. You cannot turn somebody gay by suggestion. Maybe with women because they're you know, their minds are different. You know? That's why you see more women more susceptible to experimenting. Now, the power of suggestion and brainwashing works with them. Not all of them, of course, but more than we want to be believe. But with men, there's a whole lot more involved. So, <laughs> men ain't trying to experiment with that shit. Either you gotta be or you're not. That's the bottom line. But overall, if I had to give it that movie a letter grade, you take the gay propaganda out of it. I would give it a B plus. That's what I would give it. I know a lot of people might be shocked that I gave it that, but I, I'm shocked that I gave it that too. Because I thought, man, this is some bullshit. We don't need it probably still didn't need it but in a way it was a more realistic view of Billie Holiday but again it, this still follows the trend of the gay shit black people are the ones destroying ourselves not the white man and they destroy or try to destroy every aspect of every black icon yeah, she was a no-good junkie. Whitney Houston was a no-good junkie. And the list goes on. So they tried to destroy them. Khaled Muhammad, Malcolm X, everybody you could think of. See, when they weren't on drugs, then they got to make up some other shit. Rumors. See, it's the coon Negroes who helped the white man. They helped white supremacy. Lee Daniels, see that's what they got over him. They know the mind of a homosexual. They know what that's all about. They know that that comes first. So that's why they can easily hire a Lee Daniels to shit on black people and promote this gay shit. They said Billie Holiday, I, I, cause I used to read up on her. I still not crazy about the music. That's not my music style. But if everybody else says she was uh, one of the best, then hey, I, I got to take their word on it. Um, all I know is when I saw seeing the videos of her on YouTube doing live performances, I was like, man, she's a drug addict. Junkie. Looks like it too. Obviously, she looked like it because she was, but I mean, this is what they want to do. They want to destroy black people and they get coon agents to, to help participate in it. Coon agents like Tariq Nasheed, who is no longer doing the we're Indian shit, but he's onto some other ridiculous shit that these Africans are starting to call him out on. You're saying that we're so-called foundational black Americans because we built this country. But you said we came from Africa. That makes no sense. He had to keep augmenting what he said because he's a liar. And those Africans, that Egyptian guy, they were calling him out on his shit. Like when that Egyptian guy, that half French, half Egyptian guy, he was saying, 
Egypt is not mostly Arab. And Tariq Nasheed, who gave himself that name, is saying, that's bullshit. Everybody, almost everybody's Arab. I said, man, this guy got to be a fucking dimwit. Or just a coon agent. Again, people leave out the Ottoman Turks. Look at the Turks and look at modern day Arabs, which are usually the ones in control of the governments of the so-called Arab countries. They look the same. Because they are the same. The French guy was schooling Tariq. Letting him know that just because speak, people speak a language doesn't mean that that's what the people are. He even schooled him on France. That guy was right in that regard. But not right in the ancient Egyptian thing. And that's what happens when you got a dimwit trying to act like he's intelligent. And you, when Tariq Nashi doesn't know what he's talking about, that's when he starts the over talking shit, the muting game, the name calling game. He might as well stop this Twitter spaces because he ain't ready for the big time. And he tries to use a little bit of my techniques. But see, I tell these people, you can't use my techniques because. I have a purpose with my techniques. You don't know where I'm going, but you think that you know where I'm going. And that's when people start coming with the name calling, trying to cut it short, trying to figure out how to get me off the show or trying to ask me a whole bunch of questions. So I won't ask questions, all that kind of, all different types of tactics. They get nervous. Michi X got nervous. That's why she called off the interview. Because they told her, don't do an interview with this brother. Because you won't come out of it looking good. But she may have come out of it looking better than she looks now. But instead, they call you, call me a clout chaser. But I didn't give a damn if it was on her channel my channel hell i'd even let the forecast have it on his channel and he would be a pretty good moderator if you don't if i don't say or anybody else's that's neutral's channel so she couldn't call me a clout chaser do you call that dana with the data is she a clout chaser because she got judge joe brown on which of course she's planted to help make her channel and all that kind of stuff some people got the hookup like that because, you know, they're part of the Coon Agency. That's how it works. They See, they, they got to stay away from me. Because like I always say, I'm the human truth serum. If you're lying, I'm bringing it out. Whether you want it out or not. So that's why I meet GX made the right call and canceling that interview. Because <laughs> if she was lying, it was going to get brought out. And that's why Tariq Nasheed keeps avoiding me. He knows who I am. He said my name. He's stealing my style. He doesn't want the throwdown. Like I said, Mr. Nasheed, when it comes to knowledge, you're going to get that beat down. When it comes to jokes, you're going to get that beat down. Either way, I'm always prepared. Wish Brandon would have uh, made the jokes. Instead, he went on talking about a woman and berating her with jokes. But yet, when it was Tariq Nasheed's turn, the motherfucker turned into Gandhi. Calm voice. Talking about, I, I said, man, this must be some agent type avoidance type of shit. Like he couldn't put the man down or something. I don't know. So something ain't right. Because Brandon can be funny. And he can be dis disrespectful, highly disrespectful for that matter. <laughs> but um, against Tariq Nasheed, he had no words, really. And Mr. Nasheed, I'm telling you up front. I went on Brandon's show more than a few times. Because I know you're watching my channel because I know you've been stealing my shit. You've been stealing some shit from my guest Tyron and other people. 
but you abandon some of it because it's, it's going beyond your knowledge, your expertise. And you realize you can't explain the shit, so you say, fuck it, let me drop it. I went on Brandon's channel for a reason. Because I knew Nasheed was watching. That's why. So he can't say that he knows what Brandon said, but didn't know what the fuck I said. You can't do that. See, Nasheed, you're slick, but I'm highly intelligent. It's a big difference. And the difference is when you go on your Twitter spaces, people can hear the difference between a slickster and the intelligent. The intelligent are the ones that you keep trying to debate with. And your slickster ways, they can't work on these people. You know, a lot of these people coming from other countries, different educational system, different cultures. You can't pull the fast one on them. You can't pull it on me. So stop it. So I just had to uh, put that out there. Oh, yeah, let me, before I go, I, I got to make one mention of this. Now, me, I've had some, you know me, I've seen some wild-ass movies. Some movies that were absolutely ridiculous <laughs> that I actually liked. Uh, Some of them, I might walk away and say, damn, that was wild, but... Never want to see that again. Others, I might say, damn, I got, I got to get that. But the other day, I just watched the movie that was fucking pointless. Bad plot. I only endured the movie because I said, because I knew halfway through the shit. I said, I would never, ever see this again. I don't want to, nothing to do with this movie again. So, the movie was called Frogs, 1972. You know, I'm thinking it's like the movie Ants or Squirm or Alligator or I think they had a movie called Tarantula. You know, all those kind of creatures uh, <laughs> swarming over people movies. Uh, <laughs> the shit had no plot. The shit was dull, boring, pointless. And as the, I like looking to see what the critics called it, because after that, the shit was so bad, I said, I got to see how they rated that shit back then. They said the same thing. They said the shit is called Frogs. But the director, for some odd reason, <laughs> number one, those weren't frogs. Those were toads in, in the movie. <laughs> so they think some people don't know the difference those were toads but they also threw in alligators iguanas geckos uh, tarantulas and even fucking crabs I said man why is this movie called frogs if it's everything else and like the critics noted they said the animals that did the killing we're never the frogs. It's all the other animals. I said, this is fucking silliness. So once that shit was over, you know I deleted that shit. That's some shit I never, ever <laughs> want to see again. That's the movie that gets a, a negative two. Matter of fact, that movie is so bad and pointless. The main part about it is that it's pointless. I would tell you that that's a movie to not watch. And that's a movie that I wouldn't even want to watch just to say I watched it, even though I just did that. But I regret having watched it. And I'll say the main actor, I didn't realize that that was Sam Elliott in the movie. He looked pretty different. <laughs> I never saw him young. And that lady, Joan Van Ark, I had to look her up. I think she was young and re restless lady. Looked at and looked and see how she was looking now. I think she's 70 years old now. She's looking horrible. Looking very horrible. 
I deleted that shit with the quickness. What time is it now? Damn, 6.50. Uh, there's another movie I want. To, oh, yeah, yeah. Clockwork Orange. I just bought that on 4K. Yeah, check that out. Uh, but yeah, stay away from that movie. So, with that being said, what I bought, as a matter of fact, before I leave, what, uh, if you were to ask me if I were to buy that Lee Daniels, Billy Holiday movie, man, if it was on 4K and the price is right, I think I would buy it. I think I would. <laughs> Matter of fact, before I go, let me just check one thing. I want to check the uh, cast. I just want to make sure <clears throat> that that is uh, if that was Cool Bubba Ice. Let me just make sure. So the Coon agent was Travante Rhodes. The star was Andre Day. Oh shit! Damn, I I, I fucking damn. I know Cool Bubba Ice, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> See, that's why I wanted to look it up before I left. <laughs> sorry about that, man. Yeah, that ain't Cool Bubba Ice. That ain't him. That's somebody called Miss Lawrence. So that's an actual bizarre homo weirdo. And uh, I'm willing to bet... Obviously, a guy like Lee Daniels, he had to put some weirdo in the movie. But I'm willing to bet that um, that wasn't a real character. Uh-oh. Okay, they still got it on. Okay, they got ads on this thing now. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that that wasn't a real character. But damn, he look, kind of looked like Cool Bubba Ice, but he kind of looked different. That's why I wasn't sure. But he had that look. Okay, so that ain't Cool Bubba Ice, okay? Because I was like, oh, Cool Bubba Ice is making a comeback. But doing that, huh? Okay. So I ain't had no idea who the fuck that was, man. But All right, with that being said, <laughs> I'm out of here.